Imagine yourself sitting in your little Cessna and happily flying around. Your non-aviation related friend is in the passenger seat and asks you, in which direction are we actually flying? Now you might think that's an easy one and just tell him what the compass is showing. But there's actually more to the story. Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to a video about magnetic variation, deviation and why your plane's nose is pointing in three different directions. Sit back, relax and enjoy this video. Let's get started. Air France 7 Super, continue on the runway to Fox Trust. On the runway to Fox Trust, yeah. On the runway to Super. Today's video is brought to you by the Captain Joe book, Read and Do. 100 checklists to become a better version of yourself. Are you looking for a great gift for a friend or yourself? Get to Joe's book and be inspired by 100 motivational checklists for personal growth, acts of kindness, positive lifestyle habits, and much more. Find the link in the description box below. So let me tell you, there are actually three different headings you can relate to. We will look at them step by step and learn how to convert your headings from one to another. First off, we will start with the true heading. Now, per definition, it is the angle between your airplane's longitudinal axis and the local meridian. Now, what's a meridian? Basically, a meridian is the shortest connection between the Earth's geographical north and south pole. Why I specifically say geographical north, you'll see in a minute. Now, the Earth's coordinate system is divided into 360 degrees, which will give you 360 meridians all going through both poles. Sure, you can draw many more meridians in between, but the ones most familiar are the longitudes, 180 to the west and 180 to the east. So wherever you are right now, you are sitting on a longitude slash meridian. And if you believe the Earth is flat, I'm very sorry, then this video is not for you. So if you measure the angle between the meridian you are standing on and the direction your airplane nose is pointing, you have your true heading. As an example, most VFR charts are aligned to true north shown by an overlaid grid on the map. So if your line between point A and B crosses that grid, the angle measured is your true heading. But Joe, how do I measure this angle in flight? Well, that's exactly the problem, which is why in aviation we mostly rely on the second heading, which is the magnetic heading. Now, you've all seen one of those before, a magnetic compass. In school, we learned that the needle of the compass always points towards north. As mentioned before, we have a geographical North and South Pole, but this compass does not point towards the North Pole. Our planet Earth is surrounded by a magnetic field, giving us the magnetic North Pole and the magnetic South Pole to which the compass is pointing to. I hope that makes sense. This magnetic field also has its grid on your VFR chart similar to our meridians. So our magnetic heading is the angle between your airplane's longitudinal axis and the local horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field or magnetic lines. I'll explain further, hang on. So whenever you look at your compass or your heading indicator in your aircraft, you are flying or following a magnetic heading. But now comes the tricky part. The North Magnetic Pole is not co-located with the geographical North Pole. The pictures you see of the people posing at the North or South Pole are pictures of the geographical North or South Pole, the point where the 360 meridians meet. But the Magnetic North and South Pole are at different locations, somewhere between 450 to 500 kilometers aside from the actual North Pole. And to make matters worse, it moves 50 to 60 kilometers every year. So the difference in angle between the true north and the magnetic north is called magnetic variation or magnetic declination. So let's look at our meridians once again. And if we overlay the magnetic lines over it, pointing towards the north and south pole, you see they create an angle. And that angle is the magnetic variation. 
along the equator as an example, the variation is relatively small. But the further north or south you go, the bigger the variation becomes. So my home base here in Munich, for example, has a magnetic variation of 3 degrees west. San Francisco has 13 degrees easterly variation. And Resolute Bay, up in the northwestern territories of Canada, the variation is a whopping 25 degrees to the west. And because the magnetic error can be so severe, the runway is aligned and to be flown by a true heading. But more on that in a minute. Now, because the magnetic heading can be derived quite easily with a magnetic compass, it is therefore broadly used in aviation. For example, heading instructions by ATC or the runway designations or the wind direction given by the tower are all magnetic headings. Write that down because this is a very common theory question. The third and final heading is the compass heading. Now, ideally, it should be identical to the magnetic heading, but the compass is influenced by metal parts of the aircraft electromagnetic interference from the avionics and other factors. Just look what happens when you hold your mobile phone next to it. Now, as these influences are fairly constant, they can be corrected by little magnets inside the compass housing. However, it's not possible to remove them completely. Therefore, the residual difference between the magnetic heading and the compass heading is called deviation. Now, the values by which you have to correct your heading are determined by a so-called compass swing procedure and are noted on a small deviation table which should be located close to your compass and might look somewhat like this. As you can see, the amounts to correct are fairly small and you might be surprised to hear that even in modern Boeing and Airbus aircraft, there is a deviation table next to the standby magnetic compass. Now, your big question. What heading indication must I effectively then fly to get to my destination? Okay, let's say we wanted to fly our little Cessna from Palm Beach County Glades Airport to Vera Beach Regional Airport. We therefore take our VFR chart and draw a line from here to here. Now, because VFR charts are orientated to true north, you can use the grid and determine the angle. Now this line here is your true course. So in our case, we have to track a true course of 0, 2, 3. Now your question is, what is a true course? Think of it as a physical drawn line on the ground between point A and point B. Literally a line that goes over every field, road, railway track, house, etc. And your goal is to maintain the shadow of your plane on that line. Neglect the angle of the sun for a moment. Now this would be too easy if there weren't any wind. Therefore, we have calculated for that too. Let's say we have to counteract for the resulting drift by five degrees to the right as the wind is coming from the east. That would give us a true heading of 0 to 8 degrees. Now, looking at the Vero Beach and Palm Beach Airport charts or the VFR chart, it states that they have a magnetic variation of 7 degrees west. Now, please memorize this very simple mnemonic. West is best, east is least. Meaning, whenever you see a westerly magnetic variation, you add that to your true heading. If you see an easterly, you subtract that variation. So in our example, our true heading plus 7 degrees westerly variation gives us a magnetic heading of 035. And now for the final calculation, we check our little compass deviation chart, which states, if you fly a heading of 030, which we roughly do, steer plus one degree, meaning we have to fly a compass heading of 036 degrees. Does that make sense? Otherwise, rewatch this part of the video once more, please. What does this mean for you then? You should fly heading 036 indicated by your compass and constantly cross-reference the compass heading with your larger HI, the heading indicator. But be careful, because of the Earth's rotation 15 degrees per hour and due to small accumulated errors caused by imperfected balancing of the gyro, the heading indicator 
will drift over time and must be reset using your magnetic compass at least every five minutes. If you have an air data computer, an IRS or backed up GPS navigation system, you don't need to worry about gyroscopic imperfections for now. But in your little Cessna, you do. Okay, here are three examples for you to try out and do the calculations yourself. Pause the video now and try to figure out and you'll see the results at the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed that little quiz and here are the results of those three exercises. And as mentioned before, let's say we were to fly into Resolute Bay, requiring us to fly their ILS approach onto runway 35 with a final course of 347 true. What heading would you have to fly on your magnetic compass with a compass deviation of 2 degrees east, with a westerly variation of 25 degrees, and a 10 degrees wind correction angle coming from the west. I'll give you the answer right now. Just pause it, do the calculations, and I'll show it to you. <laughs> and here is the magnetic heading you should be flying. If you got it right, high five. <laughs> In an upcoming video, I'll address the other issues that come with the magnetic compass, such as magnetic dip, acceleration, deceleration, and turning errors. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this flight school related video and here's your checklist today. Subscribe to my channel, check. Activate the notification bell, check. Follow my Instagram account, check. Perform a touch and go at my website, check. And check out the link in the description box below to get this fantastic book. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.